you're about to see quite a few TV clips. Each one is an individual track, so you can easily view as many or as few as you wish. As we've seen, Shane Warne found he was like millions of other smokers who want to give up. He couldn't resist one little cigarette. The problem was that he ended up in the news again when he would have preferred otherwise, I'm sure. But it seems that if he wants to kick the habit for good, then he might need to take some advice from groups like Smoke Enders, who sent him an, opful, an, an open letter of helpful hints before he took up his New Year's resolution. This morning we're joined by the National Coordinator of Smoke Enders, Philip Feinstein. Philip, good morning. Good morning. Does it surprise you that Shane cracked? No, it doesn't surprise me at all. The poor man, he was, he was, he was trying to change his entire life at the stroke of, of, of midnight, which is a hard, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. I mean, the smoking is not just an addiction. People smoke for many, many reasons. There's a psychological side, like after a meal, a cup of coffee on the phone. There's stress and emotion. There's social situations. You know, one, one person lights up, the other person lights up. There's so, there's so many issues when it comes to quitting smoking, and the poor man tried to change all that just at the stroke of midnight. He was, that was a tall order. Is, is one little cigarette a failure? It's a bit like having a Mars bar when you're on a diet, isn't it? You can still go back to steamed fish and veggies the next day. Yes, but of course, in his case, of course, we know he's, he's only had one or two, but we don't know what he hasn't had. And that's the hard part, because look, he must be feeling very, very guilty about it. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing. Everybody's watching him. Everybody's expecting him to succeed. And of course, there's lots of dollar incentives for that as well. We believe he actually quit smoking for the wrong reasons, in fact. I mean, uh, what, for money? <laughs> for, for, well, money's a good thing, but he should be looking at the other benefits that he can go and he won't have bad breath, won't have nicotine same fingers, he won't be forced into a corner at a restaurant. There's many, many other benefits. Yeah, but he'd be worrying, he'd be put on a bit of beef, uh, he wouldn't be as fit. I mean, that's a big issue for smokers when they quit, isn't it? Look, that's, that's a big point. What he doesn't realise is when he was a smoker, he was a 40 a day man, which means that every time he had a cigarette, he was touching his mouth 10 times per cigarette, 10 puffs per cigarette. Well, 40, 40 a day, that means he was touching his mouth over 400 times a day, which over a year is like, you know, uh, over, over 100,000 times. He didn't break the hand-to-mouth routine, and therefore any smoker who quit smoking without breaking that actual routine will start substituting sweets and chocolates and lollies, and of course they're going to be gaining weight. Is that why? That's the reason. People don't gain weight because they're quitting smoking. People gain weight because they are substituting food for the cigarettes. Because they have to touch their mouth. That's right. Well, that's that's exactly right. Now, nicorette gum, which is, was obviously Shane's um, uh, preferred option, obviously, it, I would presume it satisfies the nicotine addiction, but it doesn't break the habit. Is that That's all it does. Saying? Unfortunately, uh, look, the, the nicotine gum and the nicotine patch are very, very good as a nicotine substitute, and they're also very, very good for weaning a person off nicotine, but they're not breaking the habit. Some people out there call smoking a nasty little habit. It's not a nasty little habit. It's a very, very complex issue, and unless a person deals with all the issues before they even stop, they can always go back to smoking. That's why so many people quit smoking and go back. It's nothing to do with the addiction. It's to do with breaking the habit. So you're saying that all smokers should go into therapy when they want to quit? Well, when I say therapy, perhaps, for, perhaps it's more uh, a situation of identifying their particular triggers, because there are thousands of triggers. Unless a person deals with the triggers or at least recognizes them beforehand, they can always go back into smoking. That's why so many people who actually quit smoking, three or six months later, they think that they're craving. That's scientifically impossible, because once the nicotine's out the system, it's out the system. What, what, what happens is the trigger comes along, they think about a cigarette, and they then say to themselves, I'm actually craving for a cigarette. It's a trigger that's making them think about it. They need to break all those issues. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Those who give up all the more, Philip Feinstein there. After the